Section 10 of Journal of the Reverend Francis Asbury, Volume 1. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Sandra Robinson. Saturday, 19. This day was chiefly spent in reading and prayer. Peace, purity, and a spirit of warm devotion filled my heart. Glory to God, the author of all my blessings. The next day, the congregation at the point were but little affected, but at night the attention of the people in town was much struck, while I preached from Matthew 3, 7. Monday, 21. I rode eight miles and preached at Mr. G.'s, rode afterward to Middle River, and had the satisfaction of seeing our new house raised and covered in. An opposer of the truth has been lately and suddenly summoned, by the smallpox, to answer for his conduct at the bar of Almighty God rode to N. Perrigs the next day, and found some whose hearts were tender. S. W. gave me an account of the happy departure of his brother, John Waters, from this wicked and dangerous world. He had acted in the capacity of a steward among us, and was a serious, faithful man. Quote, happy soul, who, free from harms, rests within his Saviour's arms. End quote. N. P. rode in company with me to W. L.'s, where we spent the evening comfortably. After preaching a few times, I returned on Thursday to town, and was much pleased to hear of the success which W. M. had met with in raising a subscription of more than a hundred pounds for our building. Thus doth the Lord give us favor in the sight of the people. Mr. R. took up two lots of ground for the purpose of building, and Mr. M. seemed determined to prosecute the work at all events. Surely the Lord hath stirred up their minds in this pious enterprise, and will bless them therein. As my body has now gained a little strength, I am determined to rise early and make the most of my precious time. Lord's Day 27. I rose with a solemn sense of God on my heart, and had many to hear, both in town and at the point. Tuesday, March 1. Several went with me to John Waters's, where we found a large company of people collected, who appeared both ignorant and proud. While attempting to preach to them from these words, quote, May we know what this new doctrine whereof thou speakest is, end quote. My mind was oppressed above measure, so that both my heart and my mouth were almost shut, and after I had done, my spirit was greatly troubled. O oh, my soul, if confined to the society of the wicked, what couldst thou find but vexation and grief? But, quote, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty, end quote. Having frequently sixteen or twenty miles to ride, and then to preach before dinner, which is often as late as four o'clock, it shakes my constitution and is painful to the flesh. But I cheerfully submit to these things for the sake of precious souls. What did the blessed Jesus suffer for me? The next day, a champion in sin, a man who had been a famous ringleader in absurd and diabolical sports, was deeply wounded by the Spirit of God, while, in the course of my sermon, I was describing the horrible torments to which those would be exposed in hell, who had been instruments in the hands of Satan, to train up others in sin and disobedience. He afterward invited me home, and we had some serious conversation. I then returned to Baltimore. Friday, March 4. I was closely employed all this day, and enjoyed peace in my soul. But, oh, how does my spirit pant for more of God! The next morning my mind was somewhat dejected by the weight of my strong desires for more pure and undefiled religion. In reading the works of Mr. Brandon, especially his meditations, my heart was greatly melted. Through grace I feel a fixed determination to live more than ever to the glory of God. On the Lord's day I labored for my Master, both in the town and at the point. Set off the next morning for Gunpowder Neck, and on Tuesday preached at the funeral of W. P., who had waited for the consolation of Israel, and departed in peace, triumphantly declaring, quote, I have fought the good fight, I have finished my course, I have kept the faith. End quote. Here we have a lively and steady class. Oh, that they may remain so! The next day many people attended while I preached at the funeral of I. M., who also died in the Lord. My text was, quote, Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. End quote. The power of the Lord was present, and it was a melting time. The Spirit of God was present with us also in the upper ferry, while I preached to a large congregation from Psalm 126, 3. Quote, the Lord hath done great things for us, whereof we are glad. End quote. 
honest, simple Daniel Ruff has been made a great blessing to these people, such is the wisdom and power of God, that he hath wrought marvelously by this plain man, that no flesh may glory in his presence. Friday 11. On my way to Joseph Presbury's, my horse tired, and fell down with me on his back, but I was not in the least hurt. Calling at Mr. Henderson's, I met with I. R., a Quaker, who said it gave him pain to think that Joseph Pilmore should go home for ordination, and expressed his disapprobation of our going to the church for ordinances, supposing we might have them amongst ourselves. But this was all a farce. He would rather that we drop them all together, and in the course of conversation he labored to overthrow them entirely. But when I told him it might appear to me as a duty to use them, though I should not suppose that all went to hell who did not use them, he asked why we use them if they are not essential to salvation. What weak reasoning is this? Do they think laying them aside is thus essential, or wearing their clothes in such a shape, or using, as they call it, the plain language? Why then do they follow these practices? But what makes them so contracted and bitter in their spirit, as some of them are? There is one that knoweth. After preaching the next day at Brother P's, and having the pleasure to find that the society there had increased both in number and grace, I then returned to Baltimore, and though much fatigued, spoke at Baltimore in the evening. Blessed be God! S.O. seems determined to give up all for Christ, and the little society in town are still pressing on. The Lord has been the keeper of my soul in this journey. My peace has been great, and my intention pure. Monday 14 Set out today with some agreeable company for Mr. W.'s, and though it rained, a small congregation attended. But they discovered very little sensibility in the things of God. My frame seems lately much affected by nervous disorders, but let the will of the Lord be done. After feeling much dejection of mind, and preaching on Tuesday at the house of J. Owings, on Wednesday I visited Joseph Cromwell, a very stiff old churchman. But as his parson, Mr. E., disagreed with him in the doctrine of predestination, he was much displeased with him, and willing to receive us. I preached at his house in the day with some freedom, and expounded at night. May the Lord apply the word to their conviction and conversion. Returned on Thursday to Baltimore, and was favored with liberty and power while preaching to a considerable congregation at night. Saturday, 19. The Lord blessed my soul with sweet peace in the day, and with the aid of His Holy Spirit in preaching at night. My heart is with God. The Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. He also is become my salvation. Satan assaulted me powerfully with his temptations on Monday, but by calling on the name of the Lord I was delivered. How faithful and gracious is God! He will not suffer for His people to be tempted above that that they are able to bear, but will with the temptation make a way to escape precious truth. Sometimes we are tempted to the uttermost of our strength, but never beyond it. We always stand, at least, on equal ground with Satan, and by faith in Christ we may be more than conquerors. Tuesday, 22. I rode a few miles into the forest and preached at Mr. E.'s. The people were much quickened, and there were great appearances of real good. Wednesday, 23. At the house of W.L., I preached a funeral sermon on the death of his brother Joshua. Many of his friends and neighbors were present. It was a very solemn, awful warning season. May the people retain the impressions that they received, and be found prepared for their own departure. The next day I rode to meet Mr. W., but took cold, as the weather was severe and found myself much indisposed. Mr. W. preached an animating discourse from Revelations 6.17. There is a great probability that his coming will be made a particular blessing to many. Being much indisposed on Friday, Mr. W. preached to a large congregation. There is something very singular in his manner. Nevertheless, the Lord owns and blesses his labors. Though I continued very unwell the next day, I went to church, and heard Mr. Chase deliver a good discourse on retirement and private devotion, and afterward I attempted to preach at the point, but found myself much worse at my return to town. My indisposition and weakness of body have so pressed me down for some time past that I do not expect to abide long in this world of danger and trouble. Neither do I desire it. But come life or come death, let the will of the Lord be done. After the physicians had gone over I, I and thought they could do him no more service, we had recourse to that old-fashioned remedy, prayer, and had reason to believe the Lord in mercy heard us. Thursday 31 my illness has been so severe that I have preached but little for some days past, but felt myself rather better to-day. 
as captain webb had appointed to preach at mr w s and was accidentally prevented lest the people should be disappointed i ventured to go in his stead but after preaching was taken very ill and obliged to go immediately to bed lord's day april three though still very unwell i attempted to preach how difficult is it for a man who longs for the salvation of souls to be silent gratitude urges me to acknowledge the providence of god and the kindness of my friends the people who have had the chief trouble with me in my late afflictions have shown remarkable care tenderness and concern may the lord reward their work and labor of love wednesday six my indisposition has been so great this week that i have been incapable of all public exercises severe chills and burning fevers have been my portion both day and night oh that i may wisely and diligently improve these seasons of affliction when shall i be all glorious within my soul longs for the complete image and full enjoyment of god satan too often takes the advantage of my constitution and, and betrays me into such a degree of cheerfulness as has at least the appearance of levity but my prevailing and earnest desire is to live and act as in the immediate presence of a holy and glorious god lord make me more serious watchful and holy ventured on thursday to ride in a carriage twelve miles to town but was very ill most of the night on saturday captain w intended to have sailed in the packet but when he saw the entertainment he was to have he returned to abide with us for a short season in great weakness of body i met the congregation this evening without any intention to preach but seeing a great number of people collected my spirit was moved within me and i thought it my duty to exert what little strength i had and preach to the people but i was indisposed and confined all the next day however captain w supplied my place monday eleven i was somewhat better but i find myself assaulted by satan as well in sickness as in health in weakness as in strength lord help me to urge my way through all and fill me with humble holy love that i may be faithful until death and lay hold on eternal life on tuesday i ventured to go as far as mr l s and my soul was kept in peace though the next day my spiritual adversity assaulted me in a soft and artful way but the lord delivered me may he ever grant me grace to confide in him and devote my body and soul entirely to his service thursday fourteen rode back to town and was enabled to preach with freedom and comfort from the case of naaman the leper my heart is much drawn out after god with a determination to be more devoted to him and more fervent in prayer lord's day seventeen both yesterday and to-day my soul enjoyed more peace and more love may these graces never be interrupted a great number attended at the point while i enforced these awakening words o oh, earth 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 hear the word of the lord end quote. after meeting the class of young men i returned and spoke in town from proverbs twenty four thirty much was fatigued but desire to be thankful to god that i am gathering some strength for duty we have reason to think the spirits of hartshorn have been serviceable in my disorder monday eighteen my soul was in peace but my body weak this day the foundation of our house in baltimore was laid who could have expected that two men once amongst the chief of sinners would ever have thus engaged in so great an undertaking for the cause of the blessed jesus this is the lord's doing and it is marvellous in our eyes he hath touched and changed their hearts he hath moved them to this acceptable undertaking and he will surely complete it and raise up a people to serve him in this place tuesday nineteen my soul was in a comfortable frame but i did not employ all my time in so useful a manner as i might have done this was partly owing to my bodily weakness but in class meeting this evening we had a happy and blessed time indeed hitherto the lord hath helped so my labor hath not been in vain wednesday twenty poor mr b arrived here to-day from england in great distress he applied to me for a little money and is it come to this ah what will be the end of those that forsake god for wealth a wife or anything else o my soul keep these things always in remembrance as a perpetual caution and may the lord keep me ever humble and dead to all created good i read the rules and met the society in the evening and it was a melting happy time 
Thursday, 21. My heart was fixed on God and kept in peace. I was able to walk some distance today and believe the Lord is about to restore me to health. May it be to serve Him and Him only. Saturday, 23. Though weak in body, I have been able for a few days past to go through my public exercises, and was both instructed and delighted today in reading the Revelation with its comment. There we see the rise and spread of the Christian religion through the extensive and idolatrous empire of the Romans, the wars of the Saracens, the gradual rise and artful progress of popery. What an amazing prophetic history is this, of all people and nations in epitome! How expressive are the differently colored horses and surprising representations seen by St. John! In this book, extraordinary events are foretold, as well as the proper rule of our faith and practice revealed. If this deep book were fully understood, need we go any further after knowledge? Monday, 25. The Lord favored me yesterday with liberty in preaching to large companies both in town and at point, and this day my soul experienced a sweet mixture of peace and joy and grief. We had a very comfortable time at the class in the evening, Wednesday, 27. We were all quickened by the grace of God in class meeting last night. Blessed be God. Calm serenity fills my mind, and my body recovers a little strength. Friday, 29. What a miracle of grace am I! How unworthy, and yet how abundantly blessed! In the midst of all temptations, both from without and from within, my heart trusteth in the Lord. I was greatly delighted today in reading Dr. Guy's on the reign of Christ, which on earth will be spiritual and in glory personal and eternal. Oh, the beauties and joys of which I have some prospect in that celestial world! It seems rather strange that till lately I could discover no beauties in the revelation of St. John, but now I think it is the grand key of all mysteries, whether pure or impure, opening to view all the revolutions, persecutions, and errors of the Church from that time to the end of the world and then it favors us with a glimpse of what shall remain for ever. In preaching tonight from these words, quote, Bodily exercise profiteth little, but godliness is profitable unto all things, end quote. I took occasion to show, one, that bodily exercise, or what is called religious actions, cannot change a sinful heart or purchase love. Two, wherein godliness consisteth, namely in repentance, faith, love to God and man, meekness, resignation, chastity, and the pure spiritual worship of God. 3. Wherein this is profitable, namely, in all states, in all commerce, in the felicity of the possessor, in the general benefit of others, and finally in eternal glory. My mind has been grieved by some who have spoken evil of ministers. But I must be sure to take care of my own soul, that is more to me than all the world and all the men in it and blessed be God, he fills me with peace and purity. Lord, grant that this may be my portion, increasing forever. Lord's Day, May 1 Preached twice and met two classes. In the morning at the point I had some feeling, but found myself rather shut up at night in town. Monday 2 My soul loveth the Lord God. What a great and blessed portion is he for worthless men! This evening was spent in company with two German ministers who are very friendly and intend to be present at our quarterly meeting tomorrow. Tuesday, 3. Our quarterly meeting began. I preached in the morning and in the afternoon we settled our temporal business with great order and much love. When inquiry was made relative to the conduct of the preachers, there were some complaints of a few who had been remiss in meeting the societies and catechizing the children. The next day several of us spoke in public, and then we parted in peace had a friendly intercourse with Mr. O. and Mr. S., the German ministers, respecting the plan on church discipline which they intended to proceed. They agreed to imitate our methods as nearly as possible. Friday 6. I preached from Matthew 12.50, but felt my mind dejected. Not meeting the success in this town that my soul ardently longs for, I rather feel a desire to depart and to try some other people, but let the will of the Lord be done. My heart has been deeply affected by reading the life of Colonel Gardiner. Blessed be God for so many who experience the same work of grace which we preach, and at the same time are not of us. This is a great confirmation of the work of God. And, quote, whosoever doeth the will of my Father, who is in heaven, end quote, of every denomination, quote, the same shall be my brother, 
and sister and mother. End quote. Saturday 7. My soul longeth for God. My heart and my flesh cry out for him. Oh, that I were wholly devoted to my God. Lord's Day 8. Several appeared to feel something of the power which attended the word, both at the point and in town. On Monday my soul was at peace, and God was the object of my love. Mr. C. attended our class meeting and expressed his approbation. The Lord was with me, and we were greatly blessed. Mr. W. arrived today from Virginia. He gave us a circumstantial account of the work of God in those parts. One house of worship is built, and another in contemplation. Two or three more preachers are gone out upon the itinerant plan, and in some parts the congregations consist of two or three thousand people. But some evil-minded persons have opposed the act of toleration, and threatened to imprison him. May the Lord turn their hearts, and make them partakers of his great salvation. Wednesday 11. I went to Mr. L.'s, and preached to a large congregation then called at N.P.'s, and preached a funeral sermon on the death of his sister, who was once happy in religion. Returned to town on Thursday, and preached with freedom to an attentive audience. Friday 13. I packed up my clothes and books to be ready for my departure, and had an agreeable conversation with Mr. O. The next day some of my friends were so unguarded and imprudent as to commend me to my face. Satan, ready for every advantage, seized the opportunity and assaulted me with self-pleasing, self-exalting ideas. But the Lord enabled me to discover the danger, and the snare was broken. May he ever keep me humble and little and mean in my own eyes. Lord's Day 15. About to take my leave for a season, I went to the point and enlarged on these words. Quote, I am afraid of you, lest I have bestowed upon you labor in vain. End quote and trust some felt at last the worth and weight of divine truths. My subject at night in town was this, quote, I take you to record this day, that I am pure from the blood of all men, End quote. In preaching from these words, my mind was under some embarrassment. Perhaps my foolish heart desired to end with honor, and the Lord in mercy prevented it. May I ever be contented with that honor which cometh from God only. End of section 10